of Roslyn and what we're going to be making today is a DIY home composting system. So what this consists of, after doing lots of research online and kind of finding the best practices of mixing different methods and um, such, such things like that, uh, we're going to do a two bucket system. So one bucket will be on the bottom and the other one will go inside of it and that leaves about four or five inches there that the top bucket's not touching the bottom of the bottom bucket. So that gives us room for what we call the compost tee. So to get that, we are going to drill holes in the top bucket, only on the bottom though, to allow the liquid, once it starts to break down, um, the liquid to appear in the bottom bucket. All right, so here is essentially what's been brewing in our kitchen for a while before we finally had the time to make this little project. Um, that's kind of some compost tea that's starting. I don't know if I'd call that compost tea though. That might be just kind of rotten food bits. Um, that's what compost tea is made. But yeah, so compost tea though will be like mixed with the dry goods, which you see over here in these two flower pots. Um, we'll be mixing that in a three to one ratio. So we want <clears throat> Um, for every three parts of dry goods we do, we want one part of green goods, essentially. Alright, so on the top bucket only, as I said before, we're going to drill some holes on the bottom. What I have here is a 3 16th drill bit. Um, you can use whatever you choose. I wouldn't go too small or too large. We don't want food bits falling through. Um, <clears throat> and then on the top bucket again, along the rim, where it does not intersect with the bottom bucket, we're going to drill some holes for ventilation only. We're not going to drill any holes on the top because in our case our bucket will be sitting outside and we don't want um, any rainwater to get in there to disrupt things. we got our holes so I wouldn't recommend uh, using this bucket to actually hold liquid now because it might it might leak <clears throat> got our holes on the bottom of the top bucket we're gonna drill some holes along the rim so let's get started So now we have our holes in the bottom and on the top rim, and this bucket shouldn't have any holes in it at this point. Well, it never will have holes in it. So we put the top bucket with the holes on top of the bucket without the holes. And now we begin the part of adding in the dry goods and the compost. All right, so as I said before, it's gonna be a three to one ratio of brown goods to the green goods. So what I have here is just some cardboard without any ink or staples or tape on it. Um, so, you know, Amazon boxes, everyone has those laying around. Grab those, tear them up into little pieces. And in addition, we're going to use um, any leaves you have laying around, little small twigs, break them up into small pieces, pine straw, just kind of whatever. <clears throat> then we'll be adding those in shortly. Alright, so now that we got our cardboard kind of torn up, we'll add some of that to the bottom. Kind of make a nice layer down there. And add in some of our other dry goods. Oh, and now we open up the what could be smelly part. As opposed to dumping it? It's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> you just wanted to get your hands dirty. I suppose. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and dump dump a little bit of goop in there. Mm. Alright. Okay. 
and tasty. So we'll add a little bit more of the dry stuff. And then a little bit more of the green stuff. All right, so what kind of things can you put in a compost? All right, so what we have in the back here is mostly fruits and vegetables, um, scraps or waste, and we have some eggshells as well. Um, but you want to refrain from doing any um, animal products, such as um, meat or fats, and you want to stay away from dairy as well. So, you can already see some of the liquid. Oh, I'm so sorry that you can't smell this, but I mean, it's just, just lovely. So yeah, there you have it. Um, so we'll just let this sit on the back patio for a couple of days at a time. We'll come out and we'll stir it. And as it breaks down and things um, get a little smaller, we can add, add more of the same stuff. All right, so why would you do something like this? Um, <clears throat> Mostly you want to be able to harvest the, the compost because it's high in nutrients for your plants in your garden. If you have raised beds, that'd be a good place to, to put that, mix it in with the soil. Um, the compost tea, from what I read online, um, you can mix it one-to-one -one ratio with water and pour that over your plants to have uh, liquid fertilizer. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below and we'll also post um, a link to the full blog post for more detailed information with pictures and text and other things that you may have missed during the video. That we, have may, we may have missed during the video. Um, so if you want to go ahead and like and subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you later.